Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the right side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls. We love hearing from you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything you're dealing with in terms of health, loved one or family member in terms of a health care challenge, if you have questions about the longevity products or your longevity business or if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to comment on our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you're advertised or recommended on the bright side. Or if you'd like to sign up to join the bright side Ben team and start a longevity business, if you want to earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, if you'd like to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, if you've experienced how effective, how life changing, how transformative the longevity products can be in your life and you want to help spread the word, this is a business for you. One time $25 fee, folks, or for a one time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. Make your own hours. Enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business and help change the world at a fundamental level, level of good health. Call 866 735 2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you want to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with blemishes or dark spots or if you have fine lines or wrinkles, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is also a vitamin C product. You get a bunch of vitamin C in there along with retinol in our transdermal delivery matrix. And that's it. No preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon oil, water in any of our Truth Treatment products. You can find out all about them, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And speaking of skin and skin health, last program we were talking about the skin and cortisol, cortisol stress hormone, or I should say stress management hormone. And uh, we, yesterday we talked about the medication, cortisol medication in the skin, that's primary dermatological strategy for dealing with this, dealing with skin issues, not really dealing with skin issues, nothing dermatology does to, to deal with skin issues, but skin symptoms. And that is uh, the most powerful or one of the most powerful of the dermatological pharma, pharmacological, pharmacological protocols, drug protocols, medication protocols, or this is the steroid cream, which along with the retinoids, and uh, the antibiotics are pretty much all you're going to get from a dermatologist, and it's been that way since 1960, since the 50s. Antibiotics, retinoids, or steroid creams. The retinoids actually came out in the 70s, but uh, for a long time it was just antibiotics and steroid creams and retinoids and, and now retinoids, and that's pretty much what you're going to get today. Betamethasone, triamcinolone, fluosininide, these are all steroid meds, and they're the Go-to medications for almost all skin conditions, except maybe for acne. They don't, for some reason, they don't use steroid creams for acne. I don't know why, because acne is an inflammatory condition. You might as well use a steroid cream. Don't get me started on dermatology. I just, it's just, 
the most useless of the medical professions, and I'm sorry to my dermatological friends, but they don't do anything. They shut down the symptom with the same old protocol, same tired old strategies that they used, that have been employed for 70 years. So cortisol is not just a aging hormone. It's not just a thinning hormone. It's an anti-beauty hormone. It is one of, maybe it is actually the major cause of wrinkles and fine lines. I know the sun, the sun gets a lot of the blame for that photo aging. And yes, the sun probably has a little bit of role to play. Nutritional deficiencies have a role to play, but uh, none of them has a more important role. And most, most other, uh, most of these other causes of aging and wrinkling are have less important role to play than, than cortisol, than stress hormone. As we age, our cortisol goes up and this will show up everywhere in the body. And of course it's going to show up on the skin as well. Sun's involved. Yes. Radiate ultraviolet radiation doesn't help. And Likewise, nutritional deficiencies, but you gotta, if you're interested in, in staying beautiful, and, and I'm in the skin business, I've been making skin products now for 35 years, topical products, but I gotta tell you the truth. The truth is, if you wanna have beautiful skin, you gotta have, start working on your cortisol levels. You gotta start stabilizing your cortisol levels, reducing the exposure of the skin to cortisol. Skin cells, by the way, make their own cortisol. The skin is a defensive organ. So you're gonna have cortisol in the, in the skin that's circulating around through the blood, but the skin itself makes cortisol. And uh, cortisol not only has, this is kind of interesting, cortisol has a shriveling effect on the body. Long-term exposure to cortisol will shrivel the body up. And so the shriveling that occurs inside the body is also going to occur outside the body and the thinning and the tightening, the, the laxity, the loss of tonicity to the skin. These are in large parts, or at least in some part, related to cortisol. I say in large part. And dry skin can also be a cortisol issue. How do you like that? No skin should ever be dry, all right? Let's be clear. I, I want to be as clear as I can. Human skin is not supposed to be dry. Yet if I did a survey of people on the street or listening to this program or when I'm meeting people in presentations, I do a survey, 9 out of 10 people, 99 out of 100 people, 999 out of 1,000 or more will tell you they have dry skin. But skin's not supposed to be dry. So what's up? How come skin is so dry in everybody, but it's not, suppo it's not supposed to be dry? It's not supposed to be dry because its major role is to keep water in and to keep, wa to keep the tissue hydrated. That's its major role. So why is it that most of us have dry issues with dry skin? Cortisol, at least partially. And you know, this is really interesting. Cortisol will also make your skin oily. So your skin will be dehydrated in response to a chronic exposure to cortisol, and it will also be oily. That's called combination skin. And if anybody's told you, or if you, if you think yourself you have combination skin, this is the problem. You, this is what you're experiencing. A hormone problem, a cortisol problem, and probably a thyroid problem too because there's a relationship between cortisol and the thyroid. That's your combination skin. Skin dryness plus oiliness, combination skin, needs to be regarded as a cortisol and then thyroid issue. It's not a topical problem. And this is why... It's so darn frustrating to deal with because it's not a topical problem. How are you going to deal with it topically anyway? If you put a moisturizer on, that's going to make your oily skin more uncomfortable. If you, put, you don't put a moisturizer on, that's going to make your dry skin more uncomfortable. You can't really deal with it topically, and it's not a topical problem anyway. You want to deal with it at the level of your hormones, your, specifically your, your, your cortisol and your thyroid, specifically your cortisol. Skin dryness and the moisturization of skin is largely a function of the connective tissue. Now, the surface of the skin, the tippy-top surface, will also play a role in skin hydration and dryness. That's called the stratum corneum, for you technical, you guys who are technically uh, minded. The stratum corneum means just the hard layer, and that's the tippy, 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 tippy top of the skin. The stratum corneum layer is uh, it's about as, as thin as one-tenth of a piece of notebook paper, the stratum corneum, the hard surface, and if it's disrupted, if it's not growing, the cells aren't growing properly, you can have something called TEWL, which stands for transepidermal water loss, basically means evaporation of water through this broken down stratum cornea, and that can cause a little bit of dryness and uncomfortable discomfort on the skin surface, but hydration of the skin is much more than about the stratum cornea. A lot of it has to do with the connective tissue, which we never talk about. All right, 844 is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben, got lines open for you. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. All right, we 
are back on the bright side with lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about cortisol or thyroid issues or skin health issues, I've been doing skincare now for 35 years. Since 1982, I developed my, uh, 83, I developed my first skincare products. And I learned a heck of a lot about the skin. One of the most important things I learned about the skin is that uh, healing principle number one, not just about the skin, but I learned this about the skin. Healing principle number one, where you see the problem is not where the problem is. Where you see the problem is not where the problem is. This is the biggest mistake we make as a culture, and, and our, this is the biggest flaw in the medical model. It treats where it sees the problem, not where the problem is. Healing principle number one, where you see the problem is not where the problem is. And this is especially true about the skin because we can see the skin. We can, can't see your liver. You can't see your bones, but you can see your skin. And so we're really deceived by the appearance of skin issues, whether they're rashes or itches or pimples or boils or dryness. Nobody should ever have dry skin. And uh, human skin is not supposed to ever be dry. And certainly the stratum corneum, that surface, the tippy, tippy, tippy top surface is made up of hard protein. When that gets disrupted chronically, which by the way can be caused by cortisol too, then you may have a problem with uh, water evaporating, transepidermal water loss. They call it T-E-W-L. That's the scientific term for evaporation. But the hydration of the skin is much more than a surface issue, much more than a stratum corneum issue. It involves skin fats, the production of skin fats, lipids, they call them, skin lipids. And it especially involves the connective tissue. And this is, kind of, this is, a, major, this is a major problem that's missed when people have intractably dry skin. I, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there's a, a gentleman from Colorado who, uh, I don't know if he's listening out there, Jim, uh, I, uh, he, he was calling in last year a couple times. He called, he called actually a few times. I talked to him on the phone and wrote letters. We, 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 uh, traded emails back and forth, he sent me pictures. He had this really, really bad dry skin. Sign it just, it was painful to look at. It was, it was no mere dryness. This was awful dryness and nobody knew what to do. No dermatologists know what to do because they were focusing on the surface. Of course, they're, they're not going to know what to do. So I, when you see this kind of condition, really, really, really bad dry skin where it's just, it's almost inflamed, it's so dry. When you see this condition, you are not dealing with a surface issue. You are dealing with an internal connective tissue issue. And so, anyway, Jim and I went back and forth. He was an engineer, so he understood, he is an engineer, so he, he understood a lot of what I was saying, how you have to go into the plumbing, you have to go into the system itself, you have to go into the engineering of the system. Steroid creams weren't working for him, That's what, that was the major thing that we gave him. Uh, because they don't know what else to do, and they, they can't have anything else they can give. The retinoids would irritate. It wasn't a bacterial infection. Not that that should have stopped. And they, they, a, a lot of doctors would have given him an antibiotic. But anyway, he got a steroid cream. wasn't working. We, he called a few times in the radio program, and we talked. And I told him, Jim, you got a connective tissue problem. It's internal, and if you have a connective tissue problem, that means something is not getting processed inside your body, and usually that means food. I always backtracked to the digestive system. We went back and forth, back and forth. Didn't hear from him. Saw him at Dr. Wallach's talk last uh, Tuesday. Hands were 100% improved. Still had some dryness, but 100% improved. Not, not even close. Oh, yeah, I had digestive issues. I corrected my digestive problems, got on fats. The whole story. If you have a surface problem, you're not going to be able to treat it at the level of the surface is the moral of the story. And the worse it is, the more significant the breakdown internally is. It's true about psoriasis, it's true about eczema, it's true about acne. These are all internal conditions. And I know, you know, I've been saying this for years. We're now starting to get a little bit of understanding about this internal connection, but the mainstream still hasn't bought into this. The vast majority of people do not understand this link between the internal part of our bodies and our skin. And unfortunately, skincare companies exploit this, sometimes well-meaning ones. Sometimes well-meaning estheticians, sometimes well-meaning naturopaths all exploit this. They'll say, you know, I don't say they all do, but a lot of them will exploit this me, intentionally or non-intentionally. Either way, it's not right and it's not fair, really. Nobody, has anybody ever had their dry skin, by the way, improved by drinking more water? I don't think so. You can drink all the water you want. It's not going to help you with your dry skin. Because remember, your dry skin is not caused by dehydration. It's caused by a lack of trapping water. 
of holding the water, of movement of water. That's another thing. Water has to move inside the skin. Do you know the movement of water that occurs from the lower levels where the blood is to the surface where the skin cells are? It happens in this bi- incredible biochemical, biochemically elegant way and, and, and biochemically regulated way. Water is transported. It moves. It moves in little tiny microscopic tubes. It, it, it's tied up with these little microscopic tubes that are produced by skin cells. It, it's amazing how the hydration system, the water trapping system in the skin is mind-blowing. And so drinking more water, is something as, uh, if you think drinking more water is going to help you with your dry skin, if you're not making connective tissue properly, you're not making these little transport proteins as effectively, if your skin is somehow damaged from inflammation or too much cortisol, you're going to have dry skin. You can drink all the water you want. So the surface of the skin, the stratum corneum, it is about a tenth of a piece of notebook paper, as I said. It holds the water in. It itself is derived from what's called the epidermis. The epidermis is about as thick as one piece of notebook paper, so ten times as thick as the surface. And the epidermis is, is, is moving. The stratum corneum is not moving. In fact, it's basically just dead, like a fingernail. It's like a coating of fingernail on the surface of your skin. But underneath it, you've got some movement. That's called the epidermis. It's about as thick as one piece of notebook paper. And in the epidermis is where you have these microscopic little pores. I'm not talking about the pores in your, on the surface that you look at. These are microscopic little pores, little channels inside the epidermis. And these little channels, this is so amazing, these little channels come out of, they're, they're secreted out of skin cells. Skin cells will make these channels, dump them off. And now you have these little openings, these little channels inside the epidermis, and that's what the water flows through. These little channels that come out of the skin cells. And you can see there's a lot of chemistry going on here. If you have a problem with skin cells, if you're not making the right proteins, if you have inflammation, none of this is going to happen. And you drink all the water you want, you're still going to have dry skin because you're not making these little channels, these little pores. They call have names like, you know, I don't want to get off on the names, but aquaporin is one of the names. Now you have these cosmetic companies who are taking advantage of this. They say, oh, this will stimulate your aquaporins. No, it won't. Maybe in a test tube or in a Petri dish. But if you have cortisol and you have inflammation and you're not taking care of yourself nutritionally, you've got damaged skin cells, damaged connective tissue, you're not going to make those aquaporins. And you could put all the aquaporin stimulators you want on the surface of your skin, and it's not going to make a difference. You haven't seen these yet because they're still a little esoteric, but you will. You'll see Estee Lauder talking about them. You'll see the main skin, big-time skincare companies talk about them. If your skin is dry and it's fo- likely following this issue with making the little proteins, the little channels out of your skin cells, focus on the health of the skin. Not topically, but internally. If you're going to go topically, go with vitamin C and vitamin A. Those are your two nutritional topicals. Those are supplements, topical supplements. Supplementation, nutrition, diet is the key. Not drinking more water, but helping the body make more of these proteins, helping the cells and the skin stay healthy. And then topically, vitamin C and vitamin A. Fatty vitamin C, that is, and vitamin A in its retinol form. Where do you get those? Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. It's our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open for you. And we'll get your calls when we come back from our break. Got more good health information. And you and your phone calls coming up right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you're interested in checking out the longevity products or signing up to join the Bright Side Ben team, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. we got all the longevity products up. We also have an archive page at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com, also benfuchsarchive.com. Thank you to... Peter in the UK for setting that up. If you miss a program, there's a search engine up on both websites. You can search by various topics or dates. Brightsideben.com and Ben Fuchs Archives and BenFuchsArchive.com. And of course, our truth treatment products are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number from the Center for Disease Control. Flu season still worsening, now as bad as the 2009 swine flu. Does that mean you want to go out and get a flu vaccine? No, it doesn't mean anything of the kind. It doesn't mean anything like that. 
It means you want to lower your cortisol. It means you want to get on a nutritional supplement program. You know, first of all, the flu is not the end of the world. It can be fatal and deadly for folks who are incredibly weakened for whatever reason. For the most part, it's a fever. It's a cold. It's a really bad cold. You may... Uh, you really don't need to be in bed for if you take care of yourself. You don't need to be out of commission for a long period of time if you're taking care of yourself. How does that, how does that show up? What does taking care of yourself mean? Well, it doesn't mean getting a vaccine, that's for sure. This is from CBS News. Flu vaccine may only be 10% effective, experts warn. This flu, uh, this is from CBS News, quote, this year's flu shot may not be up to task. It is the same formulation that was used during Australia's most recent flu season, which typically sets a pattern for what the U.S. will face. So they see what's going on in Australia, and they make the flu vaccine based on that. But once they make the flu vaccine, they can't change it. Once the production is all in gear to make a specific kind of vaccine, that's the one we're getting, whether it works or not. 10%. And they want you to inject this stuff into your skin. If you are afraid of getting the flu, if you're worried about getting the flu, focus on your cortisol. Remember, cortisol suppresses the immune system. And if you're hypercortisol, you're running too much cortisol, which most of us, at least many of us are, and chronically exposing yourselves to cortisol, eventually your immune system's going to shut down or at least slow down, and you're going to be more susceptible to the flu. Sugar is a, a double, sugar gives a, 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 has a double whammy. It's a one-two punch. Number one, sugar itself lowers the immune system. Number two, when you eat a lot of sugar, that can cause your cortisol to spike, and that can lower your immunity. Sugar puts a, a, drains your body of vitamin C, which is probably the skin's, the body's most important immune vitamin. In fact, if you're worried about the, getting the flu, you'd be way better off using lots of vitamin C than getting a flu vaccine, in addition to zinc and selenium. Selenium is super important for the immune system. Zinc is probably the most important of the immune minerals, along with selenium. Reducing your intake of, of burdensome, nutrient-draining substances like sugar and food toxins or food allergens or uh, food intolerances, the digestive system being a major cause of excessive exposure to cortisol when the digestive system breaks down. All of which is to say, health is not medical. Health is biochemical. If you want to be healthy, follow the biochemistry. If you want somebody to help you with your health, go to a biochemist, not a doctor. That's probably, that's one of the most important ideas that you, when it comes to health and understanding why our health, we're not as healthy as we should be, despite we have, the fact that we have all of these doctors, more doctors per capita than any other culture in the history of the planet, it's because of our reliance on medicine, not biochemistry. Now this can, when you understand the history of it, we can, this kind of makes sense because medicine's been around a lot longer than biochemistry. Medicine's been around since ancient Sumeria, 12,000 years ago. First doctors were... The same people who gave us the first writing, the first laws, the first irrigation, the first farming, the Sumerians. And that's the story right there, who the Sumerians were. Anyway, the first doctors were Sumerian 12,000 years ago. They didn't know about biochemistry. They knew about superstition. They knew about the gods. And really, medicine hasn't changed much. Medicine is still about intervening, with the, intervening in the body, mediating in the body, med, mediating, being a middleman insinuating itself into the body. Biochemistry is about honoring the body. Biochemistry is about working with the body. Biochemistry is about understanding the roots and the causes of breakdown at the biochemical level. Where you see the problem is medical. Where the problem begins is biochemical. If you want to take care of the problem, you want to take care of it at the biochemical level, not the medical level. Go to a biochemist. Study biochemistry. I got people who are, after I do my talk, I've got a lot of young people mostly, and they'll say, oh, I want to I wanna study this kind of stuff. What can I learn? I want to help people. I want to know about this. You know, I want to learn about health. Well, don't go to medical school. Don't go to naturopathy school. Natura naturopaths obviously are a little better off and have a little more understanding of the body than doctors do, perhaps, but uh, at the causal level anyway. But if you want to get into the health business, if you're a young person, you want to get into the health business, study biochemistry. Not only will you really understand what's going on in the body, but you're going to find religion. There's no way to explain the biochemical phenomena that's, that occurs in the body to, to turn us into who we are from a health level, from a psychological level, from a physical level, without understanding biochemistry. And if you understand how amazing human beings are in terms of the cellular nature and how everything is put together and how the body works, if you're blown away by that, you're going to be really blown away by biochemistry.
And it isn't that difficult, ironically. Everybody's all intimidated by chemistry and biochemistry. It's not that difficult. Remember, chemistry is all about changing shapes. It's intricate. It's tightly regulated, and there's lots of, there's lots of little working, there's lots of working parts to it. But the foundation of it is just things change in shape. And if you can understand Tinker Toys, you can understand biochemistry. You can understand all chemistry. All right, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to Donna in Washington and say good morning. What's up, Donna? Hi. Um, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. It came on suddenly. I have been working with a nature path, but nothing seems to be hitting it. You're not and doing it. You should be noticing results almost instantly if you do it right, and certainly within and a couple of weeks. You should. It, rheumatoid arthritis is an immune problem, right? You probably know about the basics, but just for the listeners, rheumatoid arthritis is an immune problem, correct? Yeah. Well, don't, I don't, don't agree with me. Just, I want you to work with me. Do you, does that make sense? It's an immune problem. Have you heard that? Okay. Yeah. No, I want you to say, okay. I want this to make sense to you, Donna. Does it make sense? Like that it's an immune problem. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to take you down a path. I want to make sure that you, okay. that we're on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's an immune problem, correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. You do you understand that? Got to yeah. understand each step here. Okay. So it's an immune problem. The immune system is your defense system, correct? Yes. It's like the defense department of a country. That's what the immune system is. So you have a defense problem, right? You got to say yes after yes. this because I'm taking you somewhere here. Okay, you have a defense problem, correct? Yes. Okay, so if you have a rheumatoid arthritis is an immune problem, it's a defense problem. If you want to eliminate the defense problem, what do you think the one thing you want to ask yourself is? You have a defense problem, so what do you need to know? How do I get rid of it? Well, basically, but really it's what's the offending agent? Right? Where's the offense okay. coming from? If you have a defensive problem, where's the offense coming from? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not teasing you here. I, I want to work with you so you understand that each step, not just for you, but for all our listeners. So you have a defense problem, right? Rheumatoid arthritis okay. is a defense problem, immune problem, defense problem. If you have a defense problem you want to eliminate it, all you got to ask is what's the offending agent? And I'm going to tell you what it is here in a moment, okay? But I want you to understand this step-by-step process so, so it'll make sense to you, and then you could teach your naturopath so you won't have to work on your... Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you can eliminate it. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're, li- you're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. we got lines open for you. We are talking to... Donna in Washington about RA, rheumatoid arthritis. Donna, you there? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this and we'll give you a solution. But I want it to make sense to you because you're going to doctor yourself here. You're going to take care of yourself or you can teach your doctor or your naturopath about what's going on. You shouldn't have to work on rheumatoid arthritis, okay? There's no working on it. It goes away when you figure it out. So anyway, uh, it's a, an immune problem. They call it autoimmune, but it's an immune problem defensive problem. When you have a defensive response, you got an offending agent. If you want to eliminate the defensive response, you figure out the offending agent. It's as simple as that, really. By the way, ruma means flow in Latin. It means, a, 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 in terms of the body, it refers to the blood. Rheumatoid tells you it's in the blood, right? So the, that, that's a clue for you right there. Something is getting in the blood that's initiating a defensive response. An offending agent is getting into the blood that's initiating a defensive response. Are you with me still, Donna? It's not, this yeah. is, okay, good. All right, so uh, something's getting into the blood that's initiating a defensive response. Question then is how do things get into the blood? Well, you're not shooting them up through your skin, right? You're not, I, you're not shooting up crack in the back alley, correct? Okay, <laughs> right. so, okay, good, all right. So uh, what's the major way things getting into the blood? Through food, period, end of story, through food. Now, it could also have to do with a broken down digestive system, and it probably does have to do with a broken down digestive system at this point. But that is your locus of power, is the intestine. Are you with me? Uh-huh. Okay. And you can prove this to yourself by not eating for a couple of days, if you can do it. If you, can prove, if you want to you know, do a little experiment, and I encourage everybody to experiment. Trust I did. I went on a water fast. For how long? Um, six days. What would you notice? Well, my joints felt better. Well, you're on the right track. Now, you're not going to be completely reversed in six days, but you can see where you're on the right track. There's no drug that could have done that. 
There's no drug that could have done what you did in six days on a water fast. Okay? Now, you're going to have to start building up the gut, but you see what I'm saying, right? It's, yeah. There's logic to this. This isn't just me, Mr. Food Guy, saying, oh, you should fast, you should watch what you eat. I'm not Mr. Food Guy. I'm a biochemist. I'm biochemistry Ben. Okay? I'm giving you the biochemistry here. So it's logical. Of course you're going to feel better. Everybody will feel better if they have an immune problem when they stop eating. Because unless you're sticking it in through the skin, it's coming in through your digestive system. Now, you also want to start to patch up the gut. Probiotics, get on the nightly essence, use the glucogel caps, use gelatin. Uh, if you have any foods, you, you want to do a food diary probably and start writing down foods that make your symptoms flare up. If your symptoms flare, that's great. Anytime symptoms flare, that's awesome information, for, or potential information, because you just have to see what you did before they flared, and that's your cause your flare. So everything you could do for digestive health, eliminating problem foods is key, 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 in addition to building up the gut. You also want to start focusing on fatty nutrients. Fats are typically... Uh, you have fatty nutrients and watery nutrients, and the fatty nutrients are the ones that are typically deficient because they're so hard for the body to process. And there's a very important relationship between inflammation and the fatty nutrients. So make sure you're using vitamin E, 400 international units a day. Vitamin A, I would use 20,000 international units a day. Zinc picolinate, I would use 50 milligrams a day. Selenium, your ultimate selenium from longevity is a great way to get selenium. 600 micrograms a day. Do the whole healthy start pack. Do the ultimate EFAs especially. I do nine capsules a day in addition to all the digestive things. Uh, food diary, eliminate your problem foods, your uh, ultimate enzymes with your meals, apple cider vinegar with your ultimate enzymes, and then, uh, and then the nightly essence as well. You might want to throw in the glucogel caps. Okay? Will you call us back in a couple weeks if you do this program? I want to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you if you okay. would. Okay, Donna? Thank, thank you. you so much. Have a great day. Okay, mm -hmm. Take care. Where the problem is, is not where the problem starts. Healing principle, number one, on the bright side. Where the problem appears is not where the problem really is. All right, Lee in California, good morning. Welcome to the bright side. Hello? Lee. Yes, sir. What's going on, Lee? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I, I didn't hear my name said. Okay. Well, dear Ben, I've known you for 20 years. Okay. And... Uh, uh, 21 on Dr. Wallach, and you guys, both of you, um, are, are are an absolute blessing. Thank to, you. To, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I can't, you know, God says that, that life is in the blood. The life of the body is in the blood. You got it, yep. buddy. It's and, not that. It's, it's right there. right? And it makes sense, right? The blood oxygenates everything. The blood nourishes everything. The blood detoxifies everything. Of course, I, I it makes mean, sense. If we modeled it against uh, whether it's a, a rocket or, or an engine in your car, right? Um, either one, if, they, if they're off, they're going to blow up or they're going to they're gonna shut down and they're going to come back down to the ground and crash. And 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 I I just I can't tell you I've heard you endorse chelation mm -hmm. and I I had an accident once and um, my legs swell up like an elephant foot and uh, the doctor told me I'd have to go uh, have to elevate it and stay off of it for a month and I I didn't buy in on that and uh, a black doctor gave me uh, an IV the next uh, three days after the op uh, my, uh, forty stitches and and. Um, 65% of the swelling that day left my foot. and, right, and I, That's awesome. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't read a book. I, I, it, it, gnawing pain is like, like somebody having your, their hands around your neck and, and, and they're, you how'd know. You, how would you get rid of it now with the chelation? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's... it just, it, it was, you know, um, but, but and, and, and what, what, you know, we're, we're, I, years ago, uh, Marina Kennedy Solomon, she used to be the uh, National Health Federation president. And she had different people on, and, and when I f understood chelation and how simple it is, but the, mm -hmm. the thing is that she was talking 32,000 miles, and now we know it's 59,000 miles of arteries. Of blood, vessels. of blood vessels, right? Yeah, and arteries, vessels, and Isn't capillaries. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? I, oh, 59,000 I mean, miles, 60,000 miles of blood vessels. And, 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 it, and bypass surgery robs a piece out of your leg, and then... Right. And then, and, and hey, your leg never wanted to see that being stolen. And, and, and you, you know what else? Uh, your, your heart makes its own bypass, natural bypass. Well, mm -hmm. and, but here's the other part of this is, is I mean, I'm in water uh, uh, quite a bit uh, for the last 27 years. But um, 
the one thing that when you bypass something, you never address the issue of the, of right. the line, the pipe, you know. That's the, right. The lining is up. breaking down. The yeah. lining is breaking down. It's exactly what causes the cholesterol deposits, the occlusions. It's all the, the breakdown of the connective tissue at the level of the vessels. That's why I said where the problem is is not where the, where the problem where the problems You see the problem is not where the problem is, where it begins. Cholesterol is a connective tissue issue. In fact, well, lots of things are connective tissue issues. So how can I help you? First of all, where did you, did you, you and I have never met, have we? Oh, you have. I I I, uh, uh, I met you in uh, Monterey. Um, or Many years I, ago. Uh, I took a, a fellow that worked at the Navy School that is having trouble, and and uh, you were so kind to to give me your own personal cell number. And you know, I I, I uh, the other day the guy broke his his ankle, but but uh, the thing that that is important to hit me is that he um, was having uh, the doctors were telling him. Uh, this is government, Navy, uh, you know, um, no, oh, um, the, the, the medical industry in the, in, the, in the military. They were telling him he had a, some, kind of a, some kind of a ring or something in his throat that, that they were going to have to operate on. And I said, no. And he started, uh, I, and, and later the, the, his friend said, oh, well, they call it the J- Jeff juice of the M, um, uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine. But when he was bathing his throat with minerals and it, it, it topically was helping him as that's well. Exactly as, right. You can gargle with it, especially after you smoke. But uh, if you have a sore throat, I mean, oh, that's yeah, absolutely that's the case. Gargling and, with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Go ahead. Well, I have a friend that, that um, that's uh, a 67 or 8, and he uh, has had Parkinson's for the last 10 years. Okay. And his hands start shaking. He's got it's it terrible. together. You know, but uh, let me a couple things, a couple things yeah. about that. Okay. Number one, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Number uh-huh. one, make uh-huh. a dramatic difference in the shaking, especially if he gets a, a bout of tremors. Sometimes people with Parkinson's will get this bout of tremors would just go crazy with the tremors. That's a sign that their cortisol is spiked. Calming the body down is extremely important. The B vitamins are also the beyond tangy tangerine is great because it's loaded with electrolytes and the B vitamins. They're very important for helping uh, with electrical conductivity in the brain, keeping sugar down keeping, for a couple of reasons, cortisol reasons, and also the stress on the body. High dose of vitamin C, high dose glutathione. Parkinson's disease is just a deterioration of the brain, in, uh, deterioration in one area of the brain. Dementia is the same thing, but a deterioration in another area of the brain. Huntington's disease, a deterioration in another area of the brain. The key is deterioration of the brain. So what you want to do is keep the inflammation down with all the strategies we just talked about, cortis- keeping your cortisol down, sugar down, and then getting on all a good nutritional supplement program. Healthy brain and body pack. Give him one of those. Lee, I got to go. Thanks for the kind Thank words. Thank you Appreciate kindly, it. Ben. Have so a beautiful, for now. beautiful day. Thanks. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.